Hello, my name is Jason Miller. I'm currently a ServiceNow consultant with the Walt Disney Company. I've been using ServiceNow for about four years. I first got my start uh, with uh, Accenture, where I was an IT manager, uh, implementing ServiceNow for uh, federal um, side uh, customers. So today what I'd like to talk about is uh, the retroactive start condition um, when constructing SLAs and why sometimes um, the retroactive start will not correctly display the date on the start time um, within the task SLA tab. So I'm um, going to take this in small chunks. Um, what I've done is in my uh, instance, my personal instance, I've created an SLA definition, three SLA definitions, um, that basically have the same uh, can start conditions except for the fact that retroactive will be for two of them and this one that you're looking at right here this regular start I call it GP because golden parachute is the assignment group um, for the start condition um, regular start GP basically says when it's assigned to golden parachute let's start you're gonna have a duration of one day um, which means that's your SLA target um, no pause conditions on this one just really simple Stop condition is state when it gets to resolved, it'll stop running. Um, one thing I've done is I put in the task SLA tab um, out of the related list at the bottom so I can see these things fire if I want to. Um, then I created a second one, basically the same thing, uh, called retroactive created date GP. So it's basically the same definition um, with the exception that we have retroactive start and retroactive pause is selected too, but we don't have any pause conditions. Um, so really that, that won't matter uh, for this scenario. Now you'll notice that you have this set start to appear and you have to fill it in. So basically this is asking you which, ta which column on the table do we need to plug in a date from. So I've chosen uh, created. Um, I've set up my instance to import um, or create an incident every time there's an alert that comes from the Thinkorswim platform um, which is uh, something I use for trading. So it'll give um, uh, this, the created date as the start time for the SLA. Now I've created uh, a second one called expected start or incorrect time for GP. And this is a common mistake that a lot of people make is that they want to have that retroactive time as the start time. However, they don't understand that when they do set start to, all these values um, are contained in the table they all start good, and some people will misunderstand that, oh, the expected start um, is when, like, we agreed to that the, that, you know, when it's assigned to Golden Parachute um, in this scenario, this group, that that's the expected start for them. Or some people will choose the actual start, whatever it is. But you have to understand that um, you have to look at the uh, values in the actual table um, right here. Uh, for, so this, in this case, it would be incident. So we'll take a look now at the incident table, and I lined up created and expected start. Now you'll notice that created um, always has this timestamp whenever there's a, a record that's created that comes in um, as an alert, and we'll see we have ones that go back, oh, I don't know, a couple days. Um, <clears throat> uh, it just depends on when the alert hit the system. So we have all these different created dates. Um, so. Now what we'll do is we'll test out, so all these uh, definitions are currently active. So what we'll do now is I'm just going to take one of the incidents that were created um, automatically by the system and open it up in a separate tab. And we'll see I have one over here too. This is uh, number 487 and this one's 489. So now what I'm going to do is, um, and you can pretend that you have like an integration that creates these things, um, and we're going to see how the SLA definitions, when they attach to the record, um, if the actual times that we wanted to um, are displaying. So I'm just going to put in golden parachute here, pretend I'm the service desk person or the person that received it um, from, on the golden parachute team, and now we'll scroll down. And now we'll see our three definitions. So regular start didn't have any sort of retroactive condition. So it should be the current start time. So we have October 29th, 11.08. Here we go, 11.08.15 uh, on the 29th of October. Now remember, we wanted that expected start um, to uh, be filled in as a start time. It doesn't. It gives it the same 
uh, start time as when it was assigned. Now why? If we take a look at the definition here, it says expected start, fine. But if we look at go back to our table, we'll notice expected start is blank. So basically it's going back to the server and saying, oh, okay, um, what do I what time should I fill in now? Well, let me just disregard that retroactive start condition and give it an assignment time of now. So the server is just going to kick out the current time. So it's going to act as if there's no retroactive condition whatsoever. Now, if we notice uh, or look at the retroactive created date, this one is on the 28th at, it looks like 8 p.m., 8.01 p.m. and 16 seconds. So if we go back to look at number 489, out of our incidents here, right on the dime, it hits it right on the head and fills in that created date. So that's one thing that you have to watch out for is that when you're filling in um, the retroactive start condition, be very careful which uh, field um, you're linking it to, which column, because that has to be populated. Um, in a future segment, I'll show you how to put in that stamp and how to have the actual set start to populate it with that data. Um, so for right now, what I want you to understand is that basically the start time here is going to differ with, you know, in the scenario where we select a retroactive start, it's going gonna, it's gonna to differ depending on um, the value that's in that cell and also if that cell is populating with anything. So chances are you would need something in your workflow or maybe a business rule to go ahead and execute that to fill in that, that time. Now let's just say I reassign this over to, I think it's ITSM Engineering. It'll cancel all of these because in the, uh, in the cancel condition I put down, when star conditions are not met, meaning assignment group is not golden parachute. So we'll go ahead and reassign it to another group called ITSM Engineering. Now why am I showing you this part? It's because in incident, which is probably the hardest table to construct SLA definitions for, um, you'll see this behavior when uh, you're going back and forth between assignment groups. And some of it's just natural behavior. So that's uh, one point that I always make is when I'm talking to um, whomever it is that requests an SLA definition be created, I ask them, you know, what happens uh, when this, what, what should happen um, from the business perspective when the um, ticket is reassigned or the incident is reassigned, should the uh, SLA, should it cancel, should it stop, be marked as completed, what's supposed to happen in that case. So in this case, it's going to cancel. So we'll see all, we'll see the stages is canceled through all these. Now, let's say I reassign it back to Golden Parachute. And in our correct definition, which is a retroactive create, it should hold that old date of uh, 2,000 hours or uh, 8 p.m., 8.01 p.m. Um, for those of us that live in the U.S. and use that, uh, that scheme. So retroactive created date, we'll see it right here, 8.01 p.m., perfect. And then it gave these two definitions a new star time um, just because uh, it was just assigned. And as we noted before, expected start, there's nothing in that column. So again, the server is just going to say, all right, let me plop in a, a, a time that's now um, for the start time. And, and this uh, and one, one thing I wanted to uh, make a point of is that this is critical because if you're dealing with vendors, um, you're going to want that time in there because as you see here, this is... Uh, you know, a, a pretty significant gap between when the start time is. So both on the supplier side and the customer side, um, you're, you're going to want to make sure these times are accurate when you're constructing these definitions. So that's all I've had. Uh, that's all I have uh, for today. Um, please, um, you know, give me a like or uh, uh, give me a comment of if you, it's not clear what exactly I, um, how I constructed these. Um, and also, if you like other content developed or you're having other issues with SLAs or anything else on the platform, um, I'll go ahead and produce content. Thank you. Have a great day.